Hey everyone out there, my name is Shine Space, and it is no secret that people have been completely seduced by the pursuit of clout. Clout is a term I'm sure many of you are familiar with, is a term used to describe internet points, internet validity and attention, popularity, that kind of shit. And many people have found success by gaining clout, by doing things they love to do and sharing it around the internet. It builds their success and they found a way to make a living off that kind of stuff. And those kind of people have built healthy relationships with clout, where they respect the person of the clout by respecting themselves. But other people go really wild over clout. They, they kind of treat it like the holy grail, it's like to do anything, absolutely anything, so long as you get it. And today I want to talk about that. A few cases where the pursuit of clout completely kills your morality. And I want to go into this by telling a story first. There used to be a man once upon a time named Pedro. Pedro had a, a child. He had a girlfriend who was pregnant, facing to give another child to him. I don't know what really they used to do together, but what they were most known for was a video that they did, this prank. Now, prank and pranksters are like this forbidden word, this forbidden thing. Pranking used to be the shit online. It would be like this popular thing. Many people will watch, get a ho-ho and ha-ha out of it. But the relevancy and popularity of pranks online have like really been steeping low day by day to the point where many people, pranksters, Pedro included, come to the conclusion that the, the more viral your prank is, the more attention it will receive. Pedro realized this, I guess understood this, and had an idea. Not really an idea, but more of a thought. Kind of like that blue slime guy from Monster vs. Aliens that goes, Gentlemen, I don't have a brain, but I sure have an idea. So, Pedro's idea was this. He would stand, he would just stand still with a dictionary up to his chest, holding it up like this. And his girlfriend, just a couple of feet away from him, would shoot him in the chest where the dictionary was with a deagle handgun. Yeah, what could go wrong? I really don't know what Pedro was thinking at the time, why he thought this was a good idea. Because uh, like any gun, especially a, a fucking deagle, is, is such a powerful gun which shoots out a fat round like uh, like deagle versus dictionary is like a bigger mismatch than when king kong tried to fight godzilla but it doesn't take a gun expert or a librarian to guess what would happen next because what ended up happening was that pedro got killed because the bullet that was shot from the deagle by his girlfriend pierced through the dictionary and struck him in the chest and he died on the spot after this happened, the girlfriend faced some jail time for a while. She is still serving a 10-year probation and is not allowed under any circumstances to own or be in possession of a, a gun. They, they did end up getting the attention that they wanted, but for com like the completely wrong reason. The thing with pranks and pranking videos is that where some of them would be valid and genuine, the majority of them are fake. Like those videos, I, like I remember watching those prank videos of uh, pulling people's pants up and telling them to wear a belt in the hood gone wrong. And they, they like completely get, get wailed on and beaten up by those guys. Or another video like uh, uh, trying to sell guns to people in the hood, but giving them water guns instead gone sexual. Those kind of videos would like a majority of time be fake when you fake those kind of videos and you know get people or hire people to act if they're good at acting would give a more like a better reaction even though it's fake and would like like completely eradicate the risk of any retaliation from people that you are trying to prank at all so faking prank videos was common practice and it was kind of recognized except for one person. There used to be a living human being named Timothy Wilkes. Timothy Wilkes was a young man who was completely captured by the content 
surrounding pranks in the community of pranksters. Despite this, he didn't understand or recognize that a lot of what he was watching was fake and fabricated. But he had a thought. He told himself, you know what? I want to do exactly what these guys are doing. I want to do prank videos just like my heroes. I, I have more respect for people that say that they want to go to clown college to get a degree than from anyone who says that they want to do prank on YouTube for a living. But anyway, what happened was that Timothy Wilkes was trying to do his video with his friend. In, in the time back when clown sightings and, and clown pranks, that kind of shit was kind of like popular and like recognized. Timothy Wilkes' idea was to charge at people with a knife wearing a clown costume. And that's the prank. The haha, you thought I was gonna stick this knife into your neck. And because there was no one else in on the joke, he would get genuine responses. And one of those responses was a man who reacted by shooting Timothy. So Timothy is fatally shot, just lying on the ground. And apparently his final words were, it's just a prank, bro. It's almost poetic, Shakespearean even. The tragedy of Timothy Wilkes. He was made undone by the very thing he tried to build himself towards. Pranks for that YouTube internet clout, baby. The man who was responsible for shooting Timothy did not face any charges because, I mean, Timothy, despite him, you know, dying in the end, was completely in the wrong. He and his friend were like going up to him with a knife. I mean, to a guy who was completely not in on the, the, the joke. So naturally he tried to defend himself because he believed that there was like there was just this guy wearing a clown costume that was fixing to take his life. It's those kind of moments that completely destroy all reasoning. Like all reason just gets thrown out the window when you're going for clout. Nothing else matters besides clout, right? That's what they were thinking. But there's one more person I want to mention before I move on, where this prankster got shot, but fortunately survived. So this prankster named Tanner Cook was doing a video where he was just harassing people. That's a lot of what his content was. And it was during like this year and year prior. So, I mean, by then those kind of pranks were already dead, but he was still like trying to like squeeze a little bit more milk out of that old dry titty. And there was one like a uh, like thing that happened where he was trying to record a video where I don't even know what he was, he was doing, Like he was going up to people. He went up to this one guy where he was doing like this AI voice chat on his phone saying some dumb shit like you want to touch my Twinkie or some shit. And the, in the video, it shows the guys like that he's harassing saying, stop, stop it. Then the guy pulls out a gun and shoots Tanner in the stomach. This of course led to the arrest of that man who shot him because like the, despite the fact that he was harassing him, it, it's, it's not like, like the, the last one where uh, Timothy was charging at him with a knife. Like, uh, I mean, there, there was no position where he would feel threatened. I, it, it, to me, it just seemed like it was just an unhinged person that was looking for any reason to shoot someone. Or that, that, that may be a reach, but a, a, not a mentally like a sane individual that just snapped when Tanner was doing this kind of shit. I mean, I, I don't like pranksters as much as the next guy, but I mean, shooting T like Tanner for this was, I mean, that guy was completely in the wrong for that. Like harassment pranks are pretty pathetic and annoying, but fucking shooting him was a step way too far, you know? But the one thing I want to highlight with this story in particular is how Tanner, instead of having this like come to Jesus moment, this epiphany, and realizing that, hey, this isn't what I want to do with my life. He looked at the numbers, saw that he gained uh, like a couple thousand subscribers from this and more views. And he decided, you know what? I'm going to keep doing that with his chest popped out and a new heightened ego because of this. Um, just, uh, Tanner, you said you wanted to, what's your message to the people who might have a question about your content itself? 
Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to keep watching. So you'll continue to make videos? Yeah, probably. We'll see, you know? How disappointed are you about this? So I really don't video? care. I mean, it is what it is. It's God's plan at the end of the day, so. Like, like imagine being the guy that shot Tanner, who's looking at Tanner, like, still doing this. And he's still going on. I mean, his videos are, like, not really performing as well as they... I, I guess he thought he should have been. So, I, I mean, good for him if it's his passion, I guess. He's not really uploading much, which is fortunate because it lets me know that, uh, number one, he's not, in, like, getting any more access to these public places and getting into contact with people. Or, number two, he's losing that fire in him, which I really hope is the case. But if you're not a fan of his content, you might be a fan of his merch because you get some like great stuff here. Like look at this. Uh, you get the, the classic raggedy ass clothing with the YouTuber logo on it. That's always nice. And uh, these bracelets that say I heart uh, comfort ass. I don't remember what it said, but it, it said some dumb shit like that. I don't even know what it was supposed to mean. And then, and then for $2,000, you can get uh, the Tanner Cook Care Package. For $2,000, I expect that Care Package to have like a, a lifetime iPhone that just never like fails. For $2,000 for a pathetic YouTuber's Care Package, you would have probably gotten like, like a, a really bad deal. Like Tanner was just preparing that shit like, hey, thanks for purchasing my Care Package. Yeah. Uh, I put a sandwich in there for you and a couple of my used condoms I like to use when I masturbate. But yeah, enjoy. Uh, thankfully, these are sold out. So no no more of those are getting out. But yeah, I don't know why he's deciding to sell merch. Like, I, I, I would feel really bad for anyone in possession of this. Like, if I see someone mm -hmm. wear this, I, I would just really pray for them. Like, I, I would assume that they are not in a good spot in their life right now. Like, I like to imagine a parent discovering mm -hmm. this in their child's room and just being really disappointed because they'll just discover that their child is, like, really into shitty YouTubers. But yeah, despite getting shot in the fucking stomach, having a near-death experience, all he got out was nothing. No lessons were learned. It, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's awful for him. I, I feel bad for him because it seems quite self-destructive how instead of having a, a realization that epiphany that you know what this almost got me killed I, I i should do something you know better he's just like nah i'm gonna keep doing it i'm not an addict what are you talking about in those three cases where we see pranksters getting shot and killed and one surviving it seems at least to me that they would throw reason out the window if it means getting more clout from these pranks but I, I want to move on from just pranking. Recently in Florida, during a Halloween event, there was a mass shooting. Many people, like two people were killed. I believe 14 other people were injured. And it, I mean, it's a shitty situation. And it's infuriating, really, to me. I, there was one person among all those people who was a, a streamer. He was recording live during this event, you know, having a good time, drinking, and I believe he said he was drunk. And when the mass shooting started, he recorded it in his live stream. He is like running away, but he's also laughing and like smiling. People have stated that this kind of reaction from people is like a phenomenon. It's a way of like coping with stressful situations. So they would laugh and like smile to cope with the situation that is unfolding before their eyes. And I, I really had to like look at that and listen to that to give this guy the benefit of the doubt that this was his genuine reaction because like I, I remember believing that a, a mass shooting was happening where I was and I didn't react like this guy but because of that reasoning that this may be his way of coping with 
this awful situation. I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And I, I believe that was that. Uh, until a post was made by him, the, a news station reported on the mass shooting and they used this streamer's video to show it happening. And this guy is... I, man, I, I, don't, I don't even know what word to use for him. He made a post where he showed the news station using his uh, footage from the live stream and he started bitching about how they didn't credit him for the video. Which, I mean, led to me thinking that, you know what, maybe him laughing wasn't really like a, a genuine reaction to how he deals with stressful situations. It, it, it was just him thinking, oh my god, I, I can finally get more uh, like uh, attention from this. Like treating a mass shooting, like it, it's some kind of content farm. Like him thanking the universe, like, oh finally, thank you so much! People called him out on this and he responded by saying, well, of, of course my heart goes out to all who were injured and killed in this. Which is fake. I, I think it's just fake. It's just an attempt for him to get to keep everyone from crawling up his ass about this. But not only was this news about a mass shooting in a Halloween event infuriating to me, it was even more so when when you see this guy that treated this as an opportunity for him and his gain on his on his shit. And I, I, I'm using his like footage here, but I'm not going to give him credit because fuck him. But despite all of this, there, there was just one that that upsets me the most. Seven months ago, I believe, there was a incident at a Starbucks. I believe this happened in New York or Boston. I don't remember which city, but in the Starbucks, there was a man who was waiting in line with his three-year-old daughter. And there was another man that was vaping right next to them. So the man asked the, the, the man who was vaping, hey, well, could you not vape right now since I'm with my child? And that guy responded by stabbing the father to death. So th the guy who was just straight up murdering him, the three-year-old is watching in horror. The, the, the father is just bleeding out. The, the guy is just standing right over him. And then along comes this hemorrhoid, a, a complete degenerate of a person. Uh, there is a TikToker named Alex Bodger, who recorded the incident happening, unfolding before him. And uh, it, it is, I mean, I can't, I, I saw the video for myself and it, it, it was, it, it was heartbreaking to watch. Like, it, it's one of those videos that you watch that just, that just, at least it make me think that, man, all those villains that wanted to kill off all humanity in all kinds of movies or stories really did have a point. Such a chaos on yours. This motherfucker just died, bro. He just died, bro. Holy fuck. But Alex is just like, like a kind of giddy with delight while this is happening, saying, dude, no way, bro. This man dying, bro. Bro is dying. And then, like, he takes a picture of himself with the guy, the, the father, bleeding to death. And him doing like the actual fucking pog face. And the audio itself is really upsetting to listen to because Alex here is doing his thing. And you, I, I hear people screaming in the background like like for help. They, 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 they are really upset about this and horrified about what just happened. But not Alex. Just like that hemorrhoid from before with the mass shooting. It, it's just the same thing where he's treating this like a content farm, except it's even worse because there's just a straight up man dying and Alex does fucking nothing. He doesn't try to call for help. He doesn't, I, I don't know, or tr try to save him. I don't know, putting pressure in the wound. Something. But he did nothing. But despite saying that the video made me question if humanity deserved to exist, I felt my faith in humanity restore when there was a lot of other TikTokers that were calling him out and really shitting on him for this like video that he posted, really upsetting video. And Alex was in really hot water. And the next day he made a post where he was standing outside the same Starbucks, like where the father got killed, smoking a cigar, 
which made me think that this guy is such a like an actual psychopath. He's like Todd from Breaking Bad, except if he was 10 times shittier. And so I just thought maybe like uh, there was a bloody nose or something. My brain wasn't really allowing me to believe what just happened. And I knew he was dead, but at the same time, and so like, it, this is my first time ever experiencing this, right? So like my brain's just like, he's dead. Like, like, and so I just started screaming because I don't know what the fuck else to do. The murderer is standing right there. Oh, I'm sorry for the people that it pissed off. This shit, it doesn't phase me too much only because like, I've seen like, like, I'll just say human life to me, the way I look at it, if I don't know you, if I don't know you is meaningless. It's meaningless. I'm just keeping it straight up, but yeah. So he recorded himself talking about the situation saying oh, how, how I was, uh, how I almost felt like a victim because I felt afraid too. So my natural instinct was to boogie around with the camera in my hand and do pog face. He didn't really apologize for shit. He was just saying, oh, my heart goes out to uh, everyone effective, even though he also said that he doesn't care about any other human life if he doesn't know that person, which I mean, it's, I, I couldn't believe the, that thing that he said. I, I would have loved to see a vendor right behind Alex recording this like going red flags get your red flags here I, I really can't believe that people like alex budger exist where he he really goes to length and not only to show how much of the like psychotic bastard this guy is because i actually think this guy is a psychopath but also how far he would go for clout by recording a dying man next to his three-year-old daughter what the fuck Despite all these awful, sad, and just really disgusting cases where pursuit of clout really kills your reason and morality, there isn't really anything wrong with trying to pursue, you know, your success online if that's really something you want to do. There is, there are those kind of people in anything. People would do anything for whatever they want, whether it be money or some kind of commodity. People are going to be like that, like, Greedy like that. To me, clout is a lot like money. In the end, it ain't shit. And it never was. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. So, thank you everyone so much for watching Minds of Shine Space. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.